Our next speaker is uh, Monica Garcia Teruel from uh, Mexico. She gradu graduated uh, in agricultural engineering from uh, Tech de Monterrey in Mexico. And afterwards, she works in, uh, worked in the Lunar Greenhouse Project in uh, Arizona in the United States. Uh, and, uh, and then she came here to do her master's degree in, the, in our program. And uh, Monica will give us uh, her presentation on characterization of uh, ornithogalum accessions by morphological traits and resistance to uh, pectobacterium uh, carotovorum. Okay. Good morning, everybody. As Chidi already mentioned, I'm going to talk about ornithogalum characterization by morphological traits and resistance to Pectobacterium carotoborum. Ornithogalum is a genus of herbaceous bulbous perennials belonging to the family Yacinthaceae. Uh, this flower is native from South uh, Africa and it has colors. Sorry from uh, white to yellow to, do, to deep orange. Some members of this genus are used as ornamentals either for cut flowers or pot plants production, depending on some character, characteristics, mainly morpholo morphology, such as inflorescence size and number of flowers. And commercial bulb production of ornithogalum is mainly concentrated in Israel, South Africa, Netherlands, and United States. In fact, Israel is responsible for the 80% of the flower sales at the European market during the winter se uh, season with a total sales of 15 million euros. A few species of Ornithogalum are known for their high susceptibility to subroot bacteria, Pectobacterium carotoborum, carotoborum specifically. Uh, this bacteria uh, produces, produces pectolytic enzymes that causes the softening of the tissue and eventually its complete maceration. Indeed, the susceptibility of ornithogalum to this pathogen is the main limiting factor for its development and production. Uh, this pathogen enters mainly through stomata or goons, and we can see here uh, colonization of this pathogen in the intercellular spaces and the complete maceration of the chloroplast. And here we can see a uh, complete macerated bulb. Uh, today, the main uh, control is through cultural practices, and there's no chemical control existence. Because of this, uh, the, only, the only option is through breeding. And according to previous research, some cultivars and species of ornithogalum are more resistant to, uh, than others to pectobacterium. But even so, there are no reports of a design screen for resistance against this pathogen in the genus. Taken together, this study intended to find species and cultivars suitable for inter- and intraspecific breeding towards more resistant ornithogalum varieties. Uh, this study was divided in two sections. The first one was uh, with greenhouse plants where morphological traits, biochemical assays, and bacterial resistant assay was measured. And the second part in tissue culture, rate of growth and development of plants in vitro were recorded and bacterial resistant assay. The first part, the greenhouse plants, which were grown in a polycarbonate greenhouse, uh, 13 lines were used in this section, which were divided in four different groups depending on the species, dubium, thyrsoides, arabicum, and some hybrids. And the first experiment was the measurement of morphological traits. This was performed for three months, twice a week. Uh, the leaf length and width of the first two developed leaves, we wanted to see if there was some correlation with the development of the inflorescence and the flowering, the inflorescence length, number of open flowers, and the size of one open flower per each inflorescence. Here uh, we found first the inflorescence size, a 
as we can see, uh, the groups, the lines that got the biggest inflorescences were Tirsoides and Arabicum with an average of 60 to 70 centimeters. Uh, we can also see that the Dubium group were, were much more smaller in general and they reach uh, a, high, a height of maximum 40 centimeters, uh, uh, more or less. And in the hybrids, uh, we can see that they reach an intermediate size. Uh, this characteristic is really important because for cut uh, flowers, it is more desired in fluorescences equal or greater than 50 centimeters, whereas for pot plants, it's better to have in fluorescences uh, less than 50 centimeters. Also, we can observe that, for example, the, the line 452 was one of the most uniform in development in this group and we see that the 99, 49, 60 reached a plateau really soon in the season and didn't continue developing more. And these two lines, 213 and 2105, had a really slow development at the beginning and then at the end they, they had a, 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 more, a faster development. Then we have the average number of flowers, where the most flowers were seen in the Thyrsoides group with a total of uh, 74 flowers. And then uh, we got the most flowers in the hybrids was the line 281. And in the Dubium, the uh, YV was the most, uh, whereas the lines with the least number of flowers were these two also in dubium. We can also see an interesting trait that some lines started to flower from the beginning of the season and continue building flowers all along, whereas others like this one just flowers at the end of the season and almost open all the flowers at the same time. This is also very interesting because again, for cut flowers, we, we want all the flowers to open up at once, whereas for pot, flower, for pot plants, we want uh, flowers all along the season. So here we can see the differences, and the hybrids might be better for pot, for pot plants because they mostly just open up <laughs> all the flowers at the same time. We also had uh, the size of the flowers, where the biggest flower was in the Arabicum, the Thyrsoides. Um, sorry, this uh, graph is divided in groups. The red is Dubium, this is Thyrsoides, Arabicum, and hybrids. So here also in Thyrsoides, we see a very big flowers. Uh, we also see that the hybrids got intermediate uh, flower size between these lines and the smallest flowers were concentrated here in these lines. We can see uh, this result better here, a comparison of color and size of the flowers. Again, we have the biggest flower, Arabicum and Thyrsoides. And then we see that Dubium has much more uh, smaller flowers. And the hybrids got an intermediate size, except for this one. But it, this is very interesting because we can see that the size of the flower can be inherited to the offspring as well as the color because we have very deep uh, orange colors here and white here, whereas we have um, a more moderate yellow in the offspring. And then uh, we, we did some biochemical assay to measure the indirect resistance to the bacteria. And this because we have, it has been seen in other studies, especially in potato, that the level of phenols and the activity of, ens of some enzymes like tyrosinase and peroxidase are related to the resistance to Pectobacterium carotoborum and they even uh, co uh, correlate with each other for this. So uh, for the protein activity assay, first we did the protein extraction using two biological repeats from young leaves of each ornithogallum line. And then we, we moved to the protein assay using BioRAD assay for quantification. Then the enzymatic assay, we use different buffers. We use DOPA to measure the tyrosinase activity, 
and we uh, used TMB for peroxidase activity. Afterwards, we read the absorbance at different uh, levels for different buffers. Uh, for this one, uh, we see that um, the highest level was seen in thyroidus and the lowest levels were seen in dubium. Uh, however, uh, the levels of protein were lower than expected. And here also for tyrosinase, we see that the levels are more uniform along the, the lines with the exception of the YD in the dubium. But um, even though we have some differences in the lines, uh, we believe that the, the, low, the levels were very low because of the, of the physiology, physio physiological stage of the plant at the time of the, of the sampling. Uh, because for uh, practical purposes, we made the measurements at advanced stages of flowering. So I think uh, measuring this early in the season would also be helpful to observe the level of activity of the proteins. Uh, then we have the polyphenolic concentration, and this was done also using two biological repeats per line. Then the samples were fractionated with exane to remove hydrophobic residues. The phenolics assay using phenol reagent. And then we measured the absorbance and at 735 nanometers. Here uh, we can observe that the levels were higher. We got a really high levels of phenols. And we can see a trend that the hybrids reach a really good levels whereas Arabicum reached really low levels. Uh, this line also had really uh, high levels. And however, as we are going to see further, this, uh, this chart doesn't reflect previous results where the phenolics level is correlated strongly with the resistance to the bacteria. And because Arabicum was seen that it was really uh, resistant to the bacteria, further analysis have to be done at early stages to, to see this. And finally, we did the resistant assays uh, on leaf ac accession disks. First, uh, we prepared bacterial cells with GFP protein. Then 20 mi millimeter leaf disks were placed in dishes, like this one. And each leaf disk was pierced at the center and infected with bacterial suspension. After this, uh, they were pre-incubated at 22 centigrades for 24 hours and then transferred to incubation at 28 hours centigrades for 24 hours. Here we can see the leaf discs four hours, uh, 48 hours post-infection with PCC. Uh, here we can see some differences, whereas this is almost completely clean. We see uh, intermediate level of infection till a complete maceration of the leaf discs. We can also see this here. This was uh, taken in a binocular using GFP protein and white light. First we see the control which was a very susceptible line belonging to the dubium group which is known that is uh, very susceptible. Then we can see the negative control. We can see non-infection here. And then we see again <coughs> Arabicum, which is very resistant. And then uh, 452 belonging to the dubium group also with a medium resistant. Uh, the re to, to measure the resistant, we measure the average area in millimeters of infection and the percentage of list of this infected. As we can see, the control was completely infected, whereas we got non-infection and the negative control. And then we see that the most susceptible lines were in the dubium group, this one too. And then the most resistant lines were Arabicum, Thyrsoides, and the hybrids got really good levels as well. So here we also see that there was some correlation between the level of proteins, phenols, and the resistant 
in the hybrids, we got really good resistance in the hybrids. However, uh, we didn't really get correlation in the YB, which presented really high levels of phenols. However, it was susceptible, and also Arabicum. And then uh, tissue culture. Uh, here we work with 16 lines. Again, we divided these lines in the four different groups. And then uh, we started with the tissue culture propagation. Uh, young leaf segments were used to generate calluses and produce cell cultures of each ornithogallum line. For these, we used leaf segments. Uh, we cut it into small size square pieces and grown into media uh, with hormones. After that, they were incubated in a growth chamber at 24 centigrade with 14, 10 hours light dark cycle. Afterwards, we transplanted the plantlets into a new medium without hormones. Then after 70 days, uh, we transfer again uh, the plantlets into the same medium. And later, uh, we transfer the plantlets into a hormone without sugar to prepare it for bacterial infection. Here we can see the small square pieces, the initial tissue culture. And, and then we see the development of the bulblets, shoots and roots, the, the first stages. And then the last stage where we only transplanted five plantlets per each flask. And then what we observed was that the fastest development in a total of 23 weeks was seen in these two lines that were the hybrids, whereas in these other lines, we also saw a good development, but a little bit smaller. And the lines that didn't react at all were these ones. So we couldn't use these lines to, to do the bacterial infection. So for the resistant assay, uh, we used 10 leaf segments of 20 <coughs> millimeters uh, of ornithogallum lines in an angle shape, as we can see here. We place it in a petri dish, and then fresh cultures of uh, Pectobacterium were prepared for inoculation. And then the bacteria culture was poured in the middle of each petri dish. And finally, they were incubated in the growth room at 22 centigrade. Uh, the main symptoms we could observe in this assay was the colonization not only in the tissue, but also in the media. We saw yellowish and softening of the tissue, and we saw some bending of the, of the segments. So we did the first observation after seven days, and this was very interesting because mostly all the lines were still green. Uh, we can see the negative control completely perfect. Also, the, the positive control was still green. And we just started to observe a little bit of yellowish. We did a second of observation after 10 days, and then um, we could observe much more the symptoms. Here in the positive control, the tissue was already completely macerated and really yellowish. And in general, in the other lines, we started to see some bending, much more bending, and uh, bigger colonization of the bacteria in the medium. And as a difference, in the control, we could only mostly see the infection in the tissue, whereas in the other lines, we also saw it in the medium. So the results was that um, in the Thyrsoides uh, group, this 0036 was more resistant than this line, but but uh, both were really good and both produced some rooting. This was really interesting to see that besides the bacterial infection, actually uh, the thyrsoides lines have started to root. Also, this belongs to the thyrsoides and produce the biggest roots. And this is believed that the qu this quality of thyrsoides for rooting may propose that they can also be propagated by, by leaf segments. We also saw that in the hybrids, 
uh, this one looked more resistant than this one and this line had a medium resistant and this was expected because it belongs to the dubium uh, group and again this is the most susceptible one. We can see the example of the hybrids again here. Here we have the parents. This is a very susceptible line in the dubium group and this is a thyrsoides which is known that it's very resistant. This is 10 days post-infection and we can see that this tissue is already getting macerated, whereas this looks really uh, good. And we can see intermediate resistant in these two lines, but however, we can see some differences in the resistant. This, again, was more resistant than this one. And uh, to conclude, this, it was very useful to separate the lines in, in groups because this allowed to see that some traits were transferred to the hybrids, such as the resistance, such as the flower size and color. And we saw very important traits in founding Arabicum, and this was very interesting to see because it is the first time that such a resistant analysis is made in this uh, line. Uh, also, the thyrsoides groups uh, show very good resistance, whereas the dubium uh, were very susceptible. However, the dubium are, have interesting traits in flower color for the pre breeding programs. And uh, biochemical assays need further replicates and correlation. We believe that we need to do uh, more assays along the season to make comparison of the protein levels and activity because at the moment we made it, uh, the proteins were already degrading. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Uh, we have some time for questions. that uh, you uh, were using several methods to uh, several methods to uh, describe the uh, resistance of your lines. Uh, one was on leaves, one on uh, seedlings, or on shoots, young shoots. Yeah. Then you took the shoots and you uh, put them in, uh, in a tissue culture or on uh, agar and you checked. Uh, did you see any differences uh, between the lines when you were comparing all these methods or all these methods gave you the same results? Uh, you mean the resistance in vivo and in vitro? You have different methods, yeah, that you did. Yeah. Uh, uh, all of them showed you the same trend for all the cultivars that you checked? Yeah, we have a general trend, like uh, the dubium always showed uh, the most susceptible resistance, and then the thyrsoides, the thyrsoides uh, the, the was really interesting because we observed the resistance both in vivo and in vitro because we were able to propagate them in vitro. So we saw that in both, um, in both systems it was resistant. Arabicum, on the other hand, um, we believe that it's a very interesting uh, line to use it in breeding programs. However, it hasn't been able even, even in other studies, to propagate in tissue culture. So we cannot uh, relate it to it. That's the reason why you didn't. Yeah, some lines didn't uh, react to tissue culture. And also the hybrids, we saw that uh, they got intermediate resistance in both in vitro and in vivo. And for example, in vitro, we have uh, a lot of uh, systems that you can use to, to see the resistance. And we use specifically this one because we had a very few material, but we have other protocols that, I don't know, might look different. Monica, how is this disease distributed in, uh, in agricultural fields or greenhouses? How, we, how is it, is, is it transmitted from one plant to the other, from one field to the other? Yeah, uh, it is, um, the, uh, the bulblets uh, have to be changed uh, every, uh, every short periods 
because the infection uh, gets transmitted through the bulbs and the leaves. And uh, well, uh, I don't know in other countries if it's really distributed, but at least here in Israel, it's a big problem, and also in South Africa. But once I have a greenhouse with with the clean from the disease and the bulbs are clean, then. Because how do they become? Yeah. How do they become infected? Because it's an opportunistic bacteria, so it enters through wounds. So especially if the workers are not careful with the tools, it can be easily transmitted by the by the workers or by uh, not uh, having the the proper cleaning, and it enters also through stomata. So yeah, it, it is very contagious between the plants. <laughs> How long time you wait to see the result of the bacterial infection assay? Hmm? After how many hours or after how many days you you took the result of the bacterial infection assay? Which one, the in vitro or in vivo? Both. Uh, the in vivo was measured after 24, 48 hours, <laughs> and then the in vitro was after 7 and 10 days. Did you have some replicates also? Uh, no, we only did once. Okay. We, we had replicates, uh, I mean, different Petri dishes, replicates for yeah. the lines, but yeah. we didn't repeat the experiments afterwards. Okay. In your result, there was a line which has higher phenolic compound within it, but the uh, resistance was poor. That means the resistance is not related to the phenolic compound. What is your conclusion about it? It is believed that it is uh, correlated. That the thing is that um, we did the, the sampling at uh, a late flowering stage. So at this stage, we believe that some of the compounds were already uh, uh, degrading. And for example, um, Um, well, never mind. And uh, the YB, we saw really low levels of phenols, and however, it was very mm -hmm. uh, susceptible. When we did the, the experiment, this line was still flowering, was still uh, at developing, whereas in Arabicum, we got really low levels of phenols, and we really high resistant. And this was because the Arabicum was much more uh, uh, senescing. The flowers were already dying, drying. Mm -hmm. So we believe that this affected the results. That means if you take the same plant line in different growth conditions, they will perform different? Yeah, I when? think uh, we believe that if we do this analysis in different uh, stages. stages, especially at early flowering, we can see uh, more active uh, levels of proteins and phenols. Okay, thank you. Monica, after doing all this uh, work in the greenhouse and at the lab, can you actually give a recommendation for the next breeding program, I mean for next year? Do you have any ideas what should be the best lines and uh, cultivars to to try? Yeah, um, I think uh, Arabicum and Thersoides would be really interesting lines uh, for for resistant uh, and also for big flowers. Uh, the hybrids would be, I think, uh, interesting to grow them for pot plants because they bear the flowers uh, at the end of the season. They open all the flowers at the same time. Uh, also, it would be interesting to find uh, a way to propagate Arabicum in tissue culture and find if uh, we can observe the same resistance here. And the dubiums were, would be very interesting for the flower color.
Other questions, please? Yes, Indira, here. This is small question. What was the negative control? <coughs> I'm just curious about that. Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, the negative control was not infected. We only put water on it, and the positive control was infected with the bacteria. We use for this uh, dubium line, which already we already know that it's very susceptible. Are there any other questions, please? Okay. So thank you very much, thank you. Monica. Thank you.